This video is a little different to my other videos. I will not be discussing the history of Henry VIII, but rather his fertility, or lack thereof. Henry VIII had several children, in marriage and outside of marriage. Several of his children were stillborn or miscarried, and of his six marriages, only three of his wives had children with him, resulting in four live births, with three surviving to their teens. In this video, I will discuss four main theories that Henry was impotent, that he had syphilis, rhesus incompatibility, or that Henry was Kel positive. Theory one suggests that Henry VIII was impotent. In his first nine years of marriage to Catherine of Aragon, they conceived six times. They had four stillborn children and two children that survived past birth, Henry Duke of Cornwall and Queen Mary I. During his first marriage, he conceived a child with his mistress Bessie Blount and that child was Henry Fitzroy. With Anne Boleyn, his second wife, they conceived three times with only their first, Queen Elizabeth I, surviving past birth. With Jane Seymour, his third wife, they conceived only once, but within the first two years of their marriage and had one son, King Edward VI. Despite marrying a further three times in 12 years, he never conceived another child. As he got older, it is likely that he wasn't able to perform as well as he used to when he was younger, resulting in no more children. Theory 2 suggests Henry VIII had syphilis. This theory has been disproven by modern doctors. Let me explain what syphilis is first. Syphilis is an STI, which is a sexually transmitted infection. Initial symptoms include sores at the original site of infection, skin rashes or lesions, sore throat, headaches or weight loss. Left untreated, it can spread to the brain and other organs and can result in death. However, this is usually after many decades. Syphilis can spread to infants if the mother is pregnant and can cause miscarriage, stillbirth, or death of the child very soon after birth. It can also cause infertility. However, it is unlikely Henry or any of his wives had syphilis. Neither Henry nor his wives presented with any of the key symptoms of syphilis. There are no written records of them having any of the symptoms of syphilis that lasted for very long. On occasion, they may have had headaches or a sore throat or a day where they didn't feel well, but don't most of us. There are also no records of any of them being treated for syphilis or using mercury, which was the traditional method of treatment in the past. Theory three is rhesus incompatibility. When a woman with rhesus negative blood has a child with a man with rhesus positive blood, there is a chance of the mother developing antibodies. If her first baby is rhesus positive, usually the first pregnancy is fine. However, the mother will develop antibodies which will synthesize her to any future rhesus positive babies. These antibodies will attack her future baby's blood, easily treated now and usually screened for while the mother is pregnant. In the past, it generally resulted in miscarriage, stillbirth or very ill babies that most likely would not survive past their first day of life. This theory holds up quite well. With Henry Fitzroy, Elizabeth and Edward, they were all their mother's first children. With Catherine of Aragon, she may have miscarried her first child for whatever reason and this baby may have been rhesus positive, synthesizing Catherine and her subsequent miscarriages may have been caused because they were rhesus positive babies. Henry Duke of Cornwall and Mary I may have been rhesus negative and that is why they survived. The final theory of this video is about the Kell blood type. This theory is also quite likely. 
Henry may not have had the same cow blood type as his partners. The cow blood type, like rhesus, can produce a strong immune response. If a man is cow positive and a woman cow negative, the response is very similar to that of rhesus incompatibility. All these theories have some merit to them. However, it could have also been just bad luck. At the time, the birth rate was high because so many children died and people wanted to have at least one of their children survived adulthood. Prenatal care and hygiene were almost non-existent, which could have increased the mortality rate of his children. Henry was just unlucky that so many of his children did not survive.